Hello and welcome to the No Name Prayer Podcast. I'm your host, Monica. Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome back. I hope you guys had a wonderful time with your families and friends and uh, spent some time with the Lord. We are going to continue reading from the There's Power in Your Tongue book by Maria Badia. We are, I don't know if you guys remember, a few months ago, I have started reading from it. And we were also reading uh, the Be Still devotional. And um, I felt it was, it was too much at once. I wanted us to focus on, on one thing at a time. Um, and I'm also reading The Secret Heart of Jesus in Spanish. And that one is almost done. So uh, we are going to continue then. Quit the road of accusations. Psalm 39, verse 1. I said, I will guard my ways that I may not sin with my tongue. I will brittle my mouth. The ministry of accusation is the ministry of the devil. He's the accuser of the veteran. Revelation 12, verse 10. When we point the finger and accuse others, we are carrying on with the work of the devil. When we have a problem with a brother or sister, how about going to them and speak the truth in love? Ephesians 4.15 How about taking into the Lord rather than telling the whole church or group? In Isaiah 58, the Lord speaks about the kind of fast that pleases him. It includes taking away the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness. There's supposed to be a healthy diversity in the body of Christ. Even though we are all part of the body, we are not all alike. Each one of us has a different has different gifts and functions. Just as every organ in a human body has different functions, even though they're part of the same body. For example, don't point a finger at people when the, when they worship in a different style or pray in a different way that you are not used to. It not only displeases the Lord, but you might have to face negative consequences as a result of, as a result of the wrong use of your tongue. Again, Jesus says, the measure you give will be the measure you get. Matthew 7, verse 2. The Apostle Paul says in Galatians 6, verse 7, for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. What you say about others is what is coming back to you. We must learn to discern what is happening to us. Why am I saying these things? Why am I so upset? Is there a wrong spirit in me? If not, you might find yourself being used by the enemy to create disunity and conflict in his body. Remember the power of your words. The enemy knows that a house divided cannot stand. An easy way to destroy a person's reputation or a prayer group is to use our tongues for evil. We really don't need a knife or a gun. Don't point the finger and accuse God's delegated authority over your life. In number 16, Korah, Dathan, and Abram rebelled against Aaron and Moses in the desert and accused them of pride and of lording their power and authority over the Israelites. They told Moses and Aaron, Why then do you exalt yourselves above the assembly of the Lord? They created dissension and disunity and took with them 250 leaders of the congregation chosen from the assembly well-known men, and they assembled themselves together against Moses and Aaron. The Lord didn't like it one bit, because Moses and Aaron were his delegated authority over his people. The Lord himself brought judgment upon those men. They were stubborn and unrepentant, and finally we see that the ground under them split asunder, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up with their households. That's right. That's what their tongues brought them, death itself. Acts 23 verse 5 says, For it is written, You shall not speak evil of a ruler of your power, 
of your people. Jesus himself was wrongly accused time and time again. He was accused of being a gluten and a drunkard, Matthew 11, verse 19, of having a demon, John 7, verse 20, of being a Samaritan, John 8, verse 48, of being a perverter of the nation, Luke 23, verse 2, of being a blasphemer, Matthew 26, 65, of being an imposter, Matthew 27, 63, and an evildoer, John 18, verse 30. None of these accusations could be further from the truth. The devil used Jesus' enemies to carry on with his ministry of lies and accusations against him. They definitely used their tongues for death, not life, and death is what they got. Jesus told the Pharisees in John 8, verse 24, I told you that you would die in your sins, for you will die in your sins unless you believe that I am he. Proverbs 12, 13 says, An evil man is ensnared by the transgressions of his lips. Wow. I think we have a lot to think about. Um, it's so easy to sometimes um, fall into that into that sin you know where you're talking a little too much and gossiping and using your your words and your tongue for for evil and we don't even realize you know we feel the way i see it at least we feel um justified by our thoughts and feelings a lot of the times you know and we might be but at the same time we're not handling the situation correctly so we're speaking out of turn and we're falling into into sin ourselves and like it says we're choosing death so let's try to work on that this week huh we pray that you guys um enjoyed this reflection today from there's power in your tongue by maria Vazia. and I am glad that you're here. Thank you for um, for still listening to my podcast. Um, I know that I have not been as consistent as I was at the beginning or as I would like to be. I have a lot going on and I'm trying to figure out a schedule that will work. And, you know, I, I definitely don't want to give up my podcast and I am not going to. Um, just trying to fit it all um fit it all in and split myself in 10 different directions anyway pray for me i will be praying for you have a blessed day like i said thank you for listening and don't forget to share with a friend